In this video, we're going to talk about the impacts of the climate change on the ocean, the ocean and the eco-services rendered to human societies by the ocean. On the first slide, on the right-hand side, you see how the surface temperature in the ocean has changed over the one last 150 years. The researchers have talked about a one degree warming over the last century. The ocean absorbs most of the uh, additional heat generated by the greenhouse effect. This is going to lead to higher temperatures in all the uh, layers in the ocean, but especially the top one. Here we see another consequence of uh, the uh, Greenhouse effect increase, acidification. The ocean absorbs 25% of anthropic CO2 emissions, leading to what is called ocean acidification. CO2 is a weak acid, and therefore, when it's observed by the ocean, it changes the chemistry in the ocean, and the ocean becomes acidified. On the right-hand side, we have time series measured in three ocean stations showing pH decrease about one-tenth of pH units since the beginning of the 20th century. The temperature increase plus the acidification over the, last, uh, over the next few decades will continue. Here we have two scenarios, the RCP 8.5, where the uh, gas emissions continue to be rather high over the next few decades, whereas the uh, 2.6 scenario is a scenario where the emissions are contained and limited. In the 8.5 scenario, the average surface ocean uh, temperature in the ocean will be one three degrees higher whereas uh, it's only one a uh, one degree increase in the uh, scenario 2.6 likewise in the uh, 8.5 scenario the pH will continue decreasing in the surface uh, layer of the ocean up to four tenths of the pH unit whereas acidification will be limited in the uh, lower scenario on the right hand side two maps are showing you the temperature increase increase and the pH decrease divided in regions thanks to uh, measurements and climate changes. Researchers have looked at how this is going to impact the uh, organisms living in the ocean. Several methods allowed to test the response that will be expected from uh, marine organisms. Researchers have uh, grown some uh, plants or organisms in a laboratory, changing artificially the environmental conditions in the aquariums in order to understand how the organisms are going to respond to the changes. But there are other methods. Sometimes the organisms are left in their environment. The pictures on the right-hand side show you a device called FOSS for free ocean CO2 enriched enrichment experiment. Other methods use the natural gradients of pH and temperature or by uh, performing paleoceanographic uh, reconstructions of environmental conditions and uh, the organism's respond, response, and we can connect the uh, environmental conditions, pH, temperature, and the well-being and health of the organisms. Now, some data allow us to understand and determine the way these marine organisms respond to uh, ocean acidification and temperature increase. Here we see how the organisms are going to respond and what the changes will be in their main functions. Limestone organisms such as coral will uh, show a great response to acidification. The uh, way they build their skeleton will be reduced if water becomes acidified. Also, the quantity of corals will probably decrease. Other organisms which are useful for man, for instance, mollusks, will show negative response to acidification. This table shows that mollusk survival is decreased in acid water. All this uh, data has allowed the researchers to estimate the way in which uh, some of the main eco-services rendered by the ocean to uh, human beings will decrease over the next few decades. Many marine activities depend on the well-being and good health of uh, marine organisms. Uh, some people, many people depend and rely on the ocean uh, for their livelihood. And there is also aquaculture, which is a human activity, and the evolution of aquaculture will depend on the way these environmental conditions will change uh, as a response 
in response to uh, climatic changes. Other ecosystemic services depend on these uh, changes, for instance, uh, coastal protection, which may depend on the existence of a coral reef, and also for tourism, the loss of the coral reefs would cost several billion dollars per year in 2100 uh, for tourism purposes. Scientists have shown that the impact of the uh, temperature increase and acidification have already been observed for some of these uh, services. So what can we do to mitigate the impact? First of all, we can measure the uh, estimated risks, and uh, there are many difference differences between the two scenarios, 8.5 and 2.6. By uh, mitigating the uh, CO2 emissions, we could mitigate the impact that this is going to have on the ocean. If the pH and the temperatures keep changing, there will be regional impact. Scientists and economists have thought that there may be some adjustment methods. Here I'm showing an example of an adjustment made in the aquaculture on the western coast of the United States. People who uh, breed oysters have shown that uh, higher acidity in the uh, ocean water will change the way their capacity to uh, breed uh, oysters. Sometimes by simply moving the hatcheries uh, elsewhere, they have been able to adjust to the uh, climatic changes.